Yay, so I bought a new camera. Woohoo! So this is the new camera you're seeing right now. <laughs> and <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's obviously a lot bigger than my old one. Ah. <laughs> yeah, there's kind of a drop into this chair. So I bought a G85, a Panasonic Lumix G85. And I couldn't be happier. And I know I had talked a lot about buying either a Canon M50 or a Sony A6400. And so this is quite the switch up. So I just wanted to kind of mention, like, okay, why did I switch it up? <laughs> so what you're seeing right now is the very first video I ever took with this new camera. That is the San Francisco Peaks just north of Flagstaff. And yeah, they're gorgeous. Yeah, as you can see, it has a zoom lens. So uh, this camera came with a kit lens that's a 12 to 60 kit lens, 12 to millimeter to 60 millimeter. And I have to say, uh, it's really a great like focal length that's kind of a great all around focal length. So this was my old camera. This is a Canon S120. I don't know if it's focusing on it. Oh, another great thing about this camera, I have a little lens over here so I can I can see what I'm doing. But this is my old camera. This is a Canon S120, and really, it's been excellent for what it is. It's a little point and shoot. Uh, it only shoots in HD, which is really all I need. Uh, but there's a couple of things about this camera I really, really don't like. Really, the main thing I don't like about this is the sound. It has a lot of white noise, so it has two holes right on the top for a microphone. I've put this kind of wind muff thing on it, and it really, it's been brutalized and doesn't work hardly at all anymore, but there's two holes at the top where the microphones are, and basically any wind that blows over the top is just, you can totally hear it, it's awful. Uh, I don't like that I can't plug in an external microphone to it. Uh, yeah, so I really can't control the way the sound is on it. Uh, real bummer. The white noise, there's just a constant shh in the background. That's, again, you probably don't notice it unless I go to a scene where I take the sound out and then it's like shh, shh. It's not good. It's really not good at all. Uh, also, the lens, it obviously, you know, has this fixed lens, and it's got a t five times zoom. So even with the five times zoom, uh, a lot of times it's just not quite enough, right? Obviously, with my new camera, I have interchangeable lenses, so I can just buy a bigger zoom if I need it. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's been a great camera, but it's time to move on. <laughs> In an effort to keep this video from being super duper boring, I thought I'd do a quick walk right around here. I'm in Flagstaff. Well, right outside of Flagstaff at uh, Walnut Canyon National Monument. There's some beautiful camping right out here. It's gorgeous. And this will allow me to show off the biggest feature of this camera, which is the stabilization. <laughs> this camera is supposed to have some of the best stabilization of any camera. So we'll see how that works out. This is all a test. <laughs> For a while, I was pretty sure I was going to get either a Canon M50 or the Sony A6400. Uh, the Sony was definitely a better camera, uh, specs-wise. I mean, it's a really, really nice camera. And I was about 90% sure I was going to go for that one. And yeah, I just switched course, and there's a big reason. 
One of the biggest reasons for going with the G85 instead of the other two was cost. And when you buy a camera, you're not just buying the camera itself. You're kind of buying into the ecosystem. So if you bought a Sony, you're gonna have to buy Sony lenses or lenses that were made for the Sony. Same with the Canon. Well, with the Panasonic G85, this is what's called a, a micro four thirds camera. And that's a difference in sensor size mostly, uh, but it's also the different lens mounts. So when I buy lenses, from now on all the lenses I buy will be micro four thirds lenses. So the G85, brand new with a kit lens was right about $700. I actually bought this camera used on Amazon for $630. Now, I don't think that was a very good deal because when I got the camera, it had a pretty high shutter count. The camera itself was in excellent condition, but the shutter count, well, it was very high. I didn't think it was worth the $70 discount. Um, if it was like 150 or something, yeah, it would have been worth it, but it wasn't worth the 70. The Sony camera with the kit lens was $1,000, but to really make it work for me, I would have needed the widest angle lens I could have gotten for the camera. So I would have had to buy a second lens. And then when you buy, you know, three or four extra batteries so that you don't run out of batteries and other little things, well, I would have been close to a couple thousand dollars. And I just couldn't really justify that right now. This camera, the G85, with a micro four thirds mount, well, I already have a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera with a micro four thirds mount, so I already have a couple of other lenses. And so right there, any lens I buy for this camera, I can use on my other camera and vice versa. Also in the future, I really, really like the Panasonic Lumix uh, GH5. So when I upgrade to the GH5, all the lenses I have for this camera will work with that camera. So I'm gonna stay in the Micro Four Thirds ecosystem. And yeah, for me at this point in time is both a money saver and yeah, makes all the sense. Uh, there is a velvet ant right here on the trail. If you see, she's really bright colored and I know she's a she because she doesn't have any wings. So velvet ants are not ants. <laughs> They're wasps. And her bright color should be a warning to you. Don't touch her. Her sting is very painful. So that is called uh, aposomatic in biology. Aposomatic is just a warning, a biological warning, usually bright colors in an animal that tells you, stay away. Well, that's her. And again, I know it's a she because she's wingless. So the males have wings, but they don't have a stinger. And the females do not have wings and they have a really, really good stinger. <laughs> but yeah, velvet ants are gorgeous. I love these little critters. There's so many really cool little critters all around here. All right, where were we? <laughs> all right, so one of the huge reasons was, again, not being able to plug a microphone in my old camera. And this one, I've already plugged in my, it's a Rode Video Micro. I can't wait to watch this footage back just because yeah, it's just slightly breezy today, and every time a little breeze pops up, my old camera would have picked it up. And so I'm really curious to see how much of the wind this microphone picks up. Hopefully not much. <laughs> Well, here we have a nice good sized ant colony. Yeah, they build these nice big 
piles. I think that's to insulate their home, I think. Anyway, they're pretty good size. You can see it right there. <laughs> yeah. All sorts of fascinating little insects and things all around here. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> One of the things I'm really looking forward to is doing a lot more manual filming. My other camera supposedly had where you can manually focus, but I could never really figure out how to work it. So this camera I can easily manually focus and set exposure and basically just try and be a little more cinematic. There's little cinematic tricks that I want to play with and one of them is depth of field. And that's where you have one thing in focus and everything behind it or in front is out of focus. And so with a camera like this, I'll definitely be able to do a lot more with, you know, depth of field, manually focusing on things, just be more cinematic in general. And here is another little critter. I think these are called stink beetles. Yeah, this is a pretty good size one. And if you kind of perturb them, if you mess with them, they stick their rump up in the air. Which I guess is where the stink comes from? I don't know. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, rump stink. I guess that's kind of a thing. But, and they're definitely lo funny little critters because they love giving each other piggyback rides. They, <laughs> I see them giving each other piggyback rides all the time. So, definitely playful little ones. Well, I guess I better let this one wander off and do its thing. Get back to its family or whatever. <laughs> and here's one of the sad things about being on public land. Is trash. Some people just want to use public lands as, uh, as their own trash pile. This is obviously a hot tub that someone cut up and just dumped out here. And I found a couple other piles of trash and it just really bums me out. I mean, it belongs to all of us. I wish we could all collectively take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I am thirsty. So, in addition to the camera, I also bought a couple extra batteries for it, and I bought a couple of quick release plates and quick release attachments, so I can quickly just pop it off the tripod and put it on my selfie stick and vice versa, so I don't have to do the little screw on the bottom and screw it in each time. So. It should be much quicker to like switch back and forth between selfie mode and tripod mode. So I'm super, super excited about this camera. I'm like so, so happy just getting the camera in my hands. I wanted to go out and film a bunch of different stuff. I have only had it for not even 24 hours now. And yeah, I'm just super, super excited yeah, to make something awesome. But yeah, I'm just like super excited. I have to give a huge shout out to Jerry. Thank you, thank you, Jerry, for a very generous gift that helped me buy this camera. Um, it was very, very generous and appreciated. <laughs> I am very thankful. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to do stuff. <laughs> All right, I'm crossing my fingers, hoping this video is less than 10 minutes. Please, just less than 10. I've been making some long videos and, ah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs>